what is the importance of leverage in trading? What's the importance of leverage? Please write that down on the board. Let's get the questions down. Let's just do all the questions. How's that? Send the mic around. Is that mic on? Yeah, yeah. It's on. All right. Okay. All right. Cool. Does anyone have a question? Yeah. Behind. There you go. Um, how to actually manage the Panda account? How to manage the Panda account? Okay. All right. Next question. How long does it take to prepare yourself adequately before jumping to the market? What really marks the difference between successful traders and non-successful? Woo! Good one. What makes you successful versus unsuccessful? Huh? Is, it, is it good to scalp the market? Okay, is it good to scalp the market? Right, let's give Mnash a break to just to catch up there. All right, I think I'll start with your question. Um, how many were here in the last during the last weekend? Last this previous weekend and got trained by me in this classroom. All right, cool. You you remember that we went through this PDF? Why most traders never succeed? Remember? Yeah. I think it's a great way to sort of recap and get everyone on the same page. It's a PDF written by uh, well, it's an interview where they interview quite a lot of traders. Yes. Uh, these are experienced traders, and they were basically asking them, "Hey, look, why do you th why why are most traders not successful?" Yes. So I think let's get down to the bullet points. So here is what this guy says, Jerry Robinson. He says, "Most why most traders never succeed is because they don't have a system. System. I guess the question is, what is a system? Huh?" Right. What do you do to prepare yourself before you jump into the markets? That's part of the system. Your system is your approach to the markets. It's what you're doing, right? Each time before you press buy, after you've pressed buy, as well as part of the system, right? And when you close your trade and what you do. So there's a pre-trade system or pre-trade routine, something that you do before, there's something that you do during, and there's something that you do after. Yes? The pre-trade routine is obviously when you, before you start the trade, you need to scan the markets, yes? So you want to scan the markets. What are, you, what are you trading? What instruments are you trading? Why are you picking those particular instruments? And what opportunity do you see according to your trading rules, yes? What is your trading plan saying? So in other words, your plan is, are you intending on placing 10 trades that day? Are you intending on placing 5 trades? Are you intending on scalping your plan, your trading plan? Are you with me? And then you have your execution strategy or method, which would involve you setting your stop loss, right? <coughs> Using a position size calculator. And then you press buy or sell. Does it make sense? That's pretty much your pre-trade routine. Should not take too long. It's not like a ritual. It shouldn't take you like more than 20 minutes to place a very good trade. Does it make sense? In fact, the best traders will take you take five minutes to scan the market. It's enough. Then the post-trade routine, which is what you're doing after you've placed the trade, yes? You're going to journal it. So after you've placed the trade, you can do an emotional journal. So in other words, you can just write down, hey, I'm feeling a bit anxious. Ah, I over, I over risk. I'm doubtful. You need to track your emotions. Okay? Why? Because over time, you want to see when, you're, when your trades worked, what was your state of mind before when you were in them or before? Does it make sense? You know, if, if you're macking on a chick and you're nervous, <laughs> huh? then we analyze the times that you got knows from the women. Huh? Then you say, each time I was nervous, she said no. Yeah. Then you know what you need to work on. Huh? Anxiety, nervousness. Does it make sense? Each time I was excited and I was confident, it went in my direction. Does it make sense? So then you need to find out what is causing you to be anxious. Is it because you didn't plan? You just jumped into the market without an idea what, what you're doing? Does it make sense? Just kind of got in there. That usually causes anxiety. You need to write that down. When you're confident, usually you got the trade from me. <laughs> when, when you're confident, it could be because you actually 
you know, you've done some research, you feel confident about the trade. You find that most of the times when you're confident, you probably will get the trade correct. Does it make sense? When you're overconfident, ah, that's not a good place to be, right? Because in that state, you're probably being reckless. So you, wanna, you just want to write that, just a quick journal, just a quick note. Okay, feeling this way right now. Okay, and then when you're done with the trade, you want to obviously do or write down in your trading journal the results of the trade. How did it work? Um, and this is a very technical exercise. So I think we'll do that more in the masterclass series of how to actually do and use a trading journal. But you, that's pretty much a system. Does it make sense? <coughs> yeah, so you've got pre post there's something that you need to do there. Yeah? Think about it in terms of a game. Uh, maybe for a soccer match, if you're a professional footballer. You've got a pre, something you're doing before the game, right? It could be warming up. It could be the conversation. It could be actually watching your opponent's previous matches, right? And then there's the game session itself when you're actually playing. Then there's obviously got to be some sort of post-analysis after the game, right? To see what you could have improved on. Can you play all 30-something games of the season without ever looking back to see how you performed? You just want to hear only, you want to only analyze yourself after the season. During the season, no, 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 don't talk to me. You, you wouldn't be a professional, right? Cool. So basically here the saying is no system. The majority of traders don't have a system. They're attracted to the amount of money they can make and the lifestyle they're trading affords. That's it. Attracted to the money. Right? Should we, should we, let's start from the bottom up. So I don't feel crazy, because this weekend we did that. We went from top up, huh? Does it make sense? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. If I can find it, if I can find it, if I can find it. There we go. They are afraid to lose. Guess that's the difference between successful traders and unsuccessful traders. Huh? That's the number one reason. This is Peter Brandt, legendary trader, has been around for a while. Follow him on, on Twitter. Traders are afraid to lose. I see many traders who are afraid to put on a position because they are worried about being wrong. Yeah. True, right? Yeah. Does, does that describe some of you? Yeah. Very much. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, if, if, if a trade could go in eight different directions, then I would understand the reason for the worry. If it will go northwest, southeast, but it goes, you're either deciding that it will go up or down. You know, that's, that is the simplicity and the complexity of trading. It really is one of two <laughs> directions. Do you know what I mean? If, if, it was, if it was about, so you could literally guess and still be right. So the, the concept of wiring is, is is probably does not have much to do with the trading, but has more to do with your own psychological makeup. You might find that you're worried to do other things also. Maybe you're just a general, that's just your general makeup. You worry a lot, or you're fearful a lot, or you just don't, you don't, you don't like taking risks, which is fine, by the way. It's not like a diss or anything. It's fine. But you need to understand what your psychological makeup is. There are a lot of psychological tests that you can take online trader psychology tests, right? And if you are fearful, it's going to help you in the, to the extent that you might not overtrade. So it will help you in that regard. But it will work against you when you should trade. So you need to have a set of trading rules that say, look, as long as my trading rules are met, I need to get in. Does that make sense? You know the Bible says, he who watches the clouds doesn't what? The farmer that watches the clouds does not farm, it does not plant, does it? <laughs> you know what I mean? So at some point, you just need to put the seed into the, into the ground and get going. There is nothing you can do. If you, this time has come, the time has, has come. Is that cool? So he says, I don't have a problem being wrong on a trade. In fact, I naturally assume I'll be wrong on a trade. That's my default position. And because of this, I approach money management differently. What do you think he means by that? Assuming that you are wrong. What, he, what I believe he, he means by that is 
is he knows that the possibility of being wrong is really there and i think psychologically it helps him to manage his emotions well because you are already in the in the negative mode uh, you are not too expectant to say you know it has to be right it has to be right but if you're expecting it to be wrong but you do everything right but you still expect it to be wrong that means I think it also gives you room to continue to improve on your trading strategies so that you continue to to say wherever I'm actually missing it, I'm going to correct it until I get uh, to be correct in the end. Good one. You know, the problem with trading is that sometimes it goes against what you're told or what you need to do in, in life to survive. So in life, you need to have hope. Does it make sense? We are hoping that we will defeat coronavirus. <coughs> You're hoping you won't catch it. You're hoping if you catch it that you won't die. <laughs> Do you know what I'm trying to say? If everything else in life you need to apply hope, you need to, you can't leave the house, you can't leave your home expecting to die. Do you, know, you don't leave the house and you kiss everyone and the dog every day. Mwah, mwah, mwah. If I don't see you guys, the funeral plan is there, the insurance is under the, don't forget these rules, right? You, know I mean? and <laughs> you don't do that. You always jump out of the house. You know what I mean? Eternity is written in the hearts of men, right? You, you jump out feeling like, ah, I'm coming back tonight. Does it make sense? Mm. But here's what this guy is saying. You jump into a trade expecting to die. <laughs> it's, count, it's counterintuitive, you see. So you jump into a trade. The reason why you move your stop loss is because you came into the trade with hope that you are going to make money. Eh? You didn't come into the trade expecting to lose money. So when the trades are going against you, you naturally adjust. You start breaking the rules because you are, you, ever else in life, you must adjust to survive. <laughs> but in trading, adjusting could what? Kill you. It actually kills you. <laughs> Imagine that, right? Imagine that. Imagine you're driving from here to Harare. This is how traders behave. Put your stop loss on, which is your seatbelt. Right? And when you're moving really fast, the guy is clocking above the 120 k's per hour. You take your seatbelt off. <laughs> That's what happens when the trade's going against you yeah. and you put your stop loss on. You, you say, ah, no, <laughs> let me take my seatbelt off. It's, 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 when you think about it, it's actually quite... Doesn't make much sense, right? So sometimes in trading, it's true that the things that you need to survive on a day-to-day -day basis might not, might actually hinder you in trading. Yes? What's, what does this guy have to say? They don't have the right mentorship, so they just give up. Learning to trade and invest is a long process, and often people are deterred by the really bad experience along the way. Plus, this is not for everybody, but most people give up because they can't find a mentor or they get caught up in the years of a bear market. In other words, mentorship. You know, there's such a thing as social intelligence. What is social intelligence? Think about it. We, in coronavirus period right now, right? What is... What has made you know? Tell me the things that you must do in order to prevent catching coronavirus. Mask, gloves, social distancing, right? Sanitizers, right? Does it make sense? You hear those words so much, you start thinking you are the one who invented the word social distancing. <laughs> I was watching the news yesterday, and someone was saying, social distancing is very important. I'm like, you heard that word for the first time last week. Stop <laughs> acting like you invented it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's social intelligence. It's when, it's, it's, it's when information is flowing in and amongst us and we're picking up what's real and what's not real, what is relevant and what's not what? Relevant. So this is the purpose of the Trader Support Network. If you're looking at the punt group right now, that's what's beginning to happen, right? When people are, are posting their trades and others are saying, mm, have you looked into this, have you looked into that, right? You need to be part of a community. Hmm? This should be very easy for us Africans because we are a Ubuntu, Ubuntu people. But I don't know why we struggle with it in trading, you know? You need to be part of a community. Do you know what I mean by that? 
Can you be the only, the only, the only person that grows to meet in Matibillion? <laughs> you know, you, you just want to be the, always the only one. At some point, it's going to be dangerous because you won't be able to say, guys, listen, I'm not, I've got some tutor absoluta here that's hitting my plants. Have you got the same problem? Have you, got, you need the social intelligence to survive. Right? So why? Because when, you, when your next door neighbor is experiencing the same problem, you feel better about yours. Does it make sense? Yeah. You can make resolutions together. You can protect each other. That's why we live in neighborhoods and etc. So now when you start trading and you want to trade alone, huh? you don't know what anyone's opinion is today about the dollar. <laughs> you, just your own opinion. Huh? Based on this little article that you saw, I know someone said to me, ah, you see now, Boris Johnson has got uh, corona. The pound is going to fall. Okay, ask others if they feel the same way. Is, 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 this, is this helpful? So I think the first source of mentorship should come from a community, a strong community of serious traders. Not a community where it's admins only to post. That's not a community. That's you just receiving. Hmm? Learn to express your opinions about something, right? And let those opinions be tested by others because that's how you grow. So I do think the first thing about mentorship here is to get the right mentorship which comes from the community that you're in. Let's establish this community of serious traders, yes? Be part of, don't, please, don't be part of a community of demo traders. <laughs> be a part of a community of some of people who say, I blew today. Yeah. Dude, that's a powerful community, right? Mm -hmm. Be part of a community of people. I blew today. Today I withdrew 250. Okay, what did you do? You DM that person. That's the whole purpose of the trader support network. It's for you to be able to, someone post that, you go and ask them, how do you do it? They share some notes with you. They might say, I guessed it, my brother. Today was guessing. That's fine. At least you know, ah, that 250, we know how it came. <laughs> right? Is this helpful? And then obviously find someone who has got years of experience. <coughs> <coughs> Proven track record. Preferably someone who built a school. <laughs> I'm just dropping hints. Maybe someone with a six liter engine, I don't know. We're driving every kilometer, they need six liters. I don't know. I don't know what they're saying. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Maybe the right mentor is not the one that is walking with you into town looking for lifts, eh? <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Because some of you, you know what you do wrong. You want to be, so there's social, there's the social networking, there's a the community aspect of it, yes? But that does not mean that is your mentor. Get that difference. Understand and differentiate that. Your mentor must be above you. And you must be seeking to become like you. you, to, you both of you are blind. <laughs> My brother, what happened? I blew. Ah, me also blew. You know what you need to do? Next time you must go harder. Ah. <laughs> the blind are leading the what? The blind, <laughs> the blind right? Yes. Walk together, but have a leader above you all, right? And someone, then don't be jealous of the leader, man. You know, there's no reason to be like that. I don't know why people are jealous of me. With my eyes closed, I can trade better than you. There's no level. No, because of time. Because of time. Because of the time I've put into it. Does it make sense? I don't mind helping you. For free. I should charge you. So get that correct. I do think it's a big problem, though, generally in society. Because this is what happens. <clears throat> we go to churches in our own community, yes? Does that make sense? So we, so we are used to sort of coming together because we share the same issues and problems. Does that make sense? Which is not bad. But I think in trading, <laughs> you need to join a community of people who are better. Who have, so you can get there faster. You know, last weekend, this last weekend, all I said was, guys, you guys need to 
differentiate pant accounts and current accounts? And how many of you saw a massive difference in your trading in four or five days? How many people were doubling, was doubling accounts in the last two, three, four days on Trader Support Network? A lot of people, right? Does it make sense? One word shifts everything. But if you are rolling together, ee, dropping nuggets, I hope you get them. Should we do two more? Let me find something. How about we talk about, yeah, this is a big one. <clears throat> Very big one. One reason is traders enter the market with a lot of confidence because they're often smart. Zimbos. High literacy rates. Njanjan. Right? Or they, may be more, or they may be more intelligent than a lot of their peers, families, or friends. So they look at trading and they say, okay, I see most people are failing, and, but I'm generally what? Hmm? Big problem. Big problem. I'm glad we've got a banker here. He just stepped out. But bankers traditionally have always been the hardest for me to train. Because this is presumably what they think they're doing in the bank. Does it make sense? And so when you try and train them, it's like, ha. We even took them about Fox trading. They're like, you guys, what you are doing is just gambling. Does it make sense? Then you've got professors. Ah. Hard to train, bro. <laughs> huh? Because it's opinion based. You know, you know all things about <laughs> economics. But I mean, if you know that when you jump into the markets, <laughs> The markets don't, they don't care, right? So when you approach trading with that, and most of you will approach trading with your immediate strength that you have. Even if you approach business, right? You're not going to start a business based on something you don't know. Or even if, let's say if you want to do chickens today, right? You're going to say, you're going to have a conversation with yourself if you do a chicken project. You know what? I'm going to be a good chicken grower because, because I am what? I can read can write, right? Uh, I maybe did agriculture. Yes? My auntie also does chickens. I can ask her. You come up with a lot of reasons to create a net, a confidence sort of injection for you. Does it make sense? So, so then you jump into the project with some sort of confidence. So a lot of traders, this is what he's saying, a lot of traders enter the market with a lot of confidence. So you're coming into it with a biased confidence, yet the markets don't care. They don't say, ah, today we've got a professor. Yo, 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 yo. Let us respect the professor's opinion. You're a dollar. Go down, professor said in my what? <laughs> huh? The markets only do that for very few people in the world. Warren Buffett, maybe if he speaks, the markets might. Just a little bit, right? But you and I, ah, there's no chance. All right, last one. The first thing you must have is that desire and fight inside of you, if you really want this. Because as a trader, everyone goes through tough times and dark days. But it's a knowingness and willingness to do anything that keeps you. Remember last time we spoke about what is your why, what's your reason. Were you guys here when we did that two weeks ago? Why are you here? And remember I told you, over as the months progress, some people begin to fall off from trading. Because they've got weak wise. Weak, they're too weak. I want to just make money. I'm curious. Ah, boss. <laughs> <laughs> you're curious. That's why you're here. <laughs> there, are, there are cheaper ways to, to exercise your curiosity. <laughs> So what's your why? Why are you here? You need to have a strong why, a desire to fight, because trading is profitable. I'm talking about $1,000 every day from a $200 account. I've been showing you, have I not? Hmm? Hey, the camera guys, don't think I'm lying, Pela. <laughs> I've been showing you this, posting my trades, right? Yeah. And that's the small account because I didn't want to be that guy that posts his big one. Right? It's possible. But yay, to get to that level, 
ha, you've got to be, you've got to have a strong why. You've got to have a why that is beyond, that is almost unshakable. What's your why? Let's get three whys. Someone's got the camera. Give me your why. Give me your why. Give me your why. A strong why. Why are you trading? Why? Okay. Why are you trying to learn something that requires you to have skills that you don't use generally in life? You have to develop a whole new skill set for this one thing, right? Huh? Why are you willing to lose money? Because in trading, to learn, you learn by losing money. You deposit first. Huh? You, what do you do? You put money in first, right? <laughs> to learn. And you learn by losing. That what? <clears throat> irrational. Why are you doing this very irrational activity called trading? Give me a why. Who's got, a, who's got the mic? Well, firstly, I think I have two whys. Okay. Uh, firstly, obviously, I'm tired of poverty. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, I want to learn self-discipline. Because the one thing I've learned with trading, uh, you have to be disciplined. So generally in life, I'm trying to be a disciplined person. Even if I'm not trading, maybe in business, the business I would, I would want to start, I have to be a person who's disciplined in that business. Yeah, hello, everyone. I think that will give me an opportunity to enjoy the risk premium. Okay. Well, please explain that. What do you mean? Uh, isn't it uh, where there is uh, risk, yes, there is always uh, high returns? Always? M most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that kind of a person who is risk averse. But I want to why that is more personal. Why, why would you... Are you saying you enjoy taking risks? Yes. You do? So you want to see where it will take you? Yeah, I want to wait to take me. Okay. All right. Well, the reason why I would like to do training is so that I can upgrade my intrapreneur skills. Yeah. Okay, my why um, is basically so that um, it might enhance my psychological aspect and my mental abilities to be able to understand what happens in the environment that we live and trade in. All right, thank you. So you must have a why. Do you guys get the point? Yeah. All right, great. So as we proceed with the, with the, should we do this for another 10 more minutes? Let me jump into some stuff I've written here, some blogs I've written on, and give you some tips. <clears throat> there are four general trading uh, sins that you must avoid. The first one is euphoria. Euphoria is a state of mind that can lead you to com commit a deadly sin. This is when you've just uh, made money and you're happy and you're overconfident. Have you ever experienced that? You've just traded, trade worked, eh, you know what I mean? You make 200 bucks, you withdraw the 200, <clears throat> but the very next trade, <clears throat> you're going to lose the entire 200. Because you, you, you maybe take, get rid of your, remember we've got routines, right? you've got your pre-trade routine, you maybe ignore the pre-trade routine this time and just go straight in. Because you're euphoric, you're very excited about your previous results. So euphoria is something you need to be able to manage. Uh, I'll give you one tip of how to manage euphoria. First of all, withdraw. Second, so after you've done your withdrawal, um, I strongly suggest you delete your platform altogether. Harder. No, because you've got to go to, straight to fixing the problem. Are you really saying that you want to manage euphoria, yes? So you've just taken your $100 account to $400. How do you think you're feeling after that? Excited and over confident, right? Yes? Should you be trading after that? Come on, louder. Yes. <laughs> you, shouldn't be tra you shouldn't be looking to place trades after that, right? Because you are still euphoric. You've made enough money, you've made more than you should have made anyway. So you should what? Walk away, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So how is the best way to walk away? Is it saying that I must walk away? Bible says if your right hand causes you to sin, you must what? <laughs> <laughs> huh? 
Right? So if, so if the platform is causing you to jump back in, what must you do to that platform? <laughs> huh? You must cut it then. Yeah, delete it. And it can't be reinstalled. What? Yours is the one that can't be reinstalled. After making a withdrawal, and it's very possible, like we are saying, it's very practical. She deletes and she doesn't want to know. And she says when she enters that uh, password thing, she makes sure she doesn't write it somewhere so that when she deletes it, she has to go through the longer process so that it <laughs> has to take her longer to actually go back and trade. Amen. Yeah. That's great, right? So you make some profits, which all of you in here in this very room, I guarantee you will make it. I guarantee you make a profit. That one is in your future, if it hasn't already happened. The problem is after you made the profit. It's almost always a problem with me, with everyone. It's always a problem. What you need to do is you need to have a trading partner, someone that you say, hey, bras, later big. She told her computer, I'm done. Take this computer and what? Delete, change passwords. Let's see, the rest reviews this thing in three days. How many of you think that'll be very hard for you to do? Say yes if it's hard. It's hard, huh? Yeah. But it's the only solution that I can think of. That is a real solution. Not one that you write down, I will then close my trade. Ah. <laughs> so we're talking about euphoria, yeah? The second thing you must manage is anger. Or the, the ability to want to revenge. Big problem. You know, trading is easy if you don't have emotions. Hmm? Trading would be the easiest thing to do if you didn't have emotions. If you could be objective all the time, you would be profitable all the time. So you've got to manage. You know that revenge trading. You know what revenge trading means? What does revenge trading mean, guys? Uh, I think revenge trading is whereby you start doing silly things like increasing the lot sizes and on a particular trade to cover the losses you you once made. So I once did that anger after it blew my account, refunded it. So I wanted to cover. So that's how I think it's. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. So manage. So please watch out for for revenge and anger, right? The next, the last one is recency bias. So have you heard of recency bias? Recency bias is when you when you make a decision that is based on your most recent on, on the most recent event. Okay. If your last three trades were winners you're more likely to go into the fourth trade believing it's going to be a, yeah? Which means you're going to carry forward a lot of biases that come with that assumption. Confidence, overconfidence. Then you're more likely to over Right? If your last three trades were losers, you're going to place your fourth trade with the assumption that this one will be a, So you're more likely to be afraid. You won't trade it properly. You won't risk appropriately. Does it make sense? Recency bias is a problem. Imagine you could wipe out your mind, clear your hard drive here after each trade, if that were possible, to get amnesia about your last trade. That would, that would make trading easier. But unfortunately, obviously, you can't, right? So you need to remember some of these things that you're likely to face as a trader. Are you guys with me there? Recency bias. Do you guys have any questions around psychology? Give me some questions that you guys want me to talk about because I think I've talked about. Okay, let's say you're in a profit, right? Yes. Is it advisable to add more positions to that currency pair? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, a punt account. So there are two accounts I, I advise people to have. One's a punt account. A punt account is your play account. It's your account that you place all those trades that you want to place. It's, it's the one that you... Uh, yeah, it's the one that you don't apply a lot of rules to. Yes? 
It's the one that can grow from 50 to 300 by evening. Okay? It's the one that allows you to express your, the fullness of your personality. <laughs> right? It keeps you occupied and protects you from blowing your main account. Your main account is the one where you journal, you've got a procedure, you've got a system. Does it make sense? So I think whenever you've got your guts telling you, whenever you want to exercise your instinct, do all of that in a punt account. So a punt account should typically be funded with less than the money that's in your main account. So let's say your main account's got $5,000, yes? Put $100 in your punt account. Play with it. Put 200 play with it. Give yourself a daily target. Well, look, I want to make $100 a day. Yes? That's your punt account. That's the one you play with. But avoid making your punt account your main account because it's very tempting to do so because it grows faster than your main account. Hey? Eh? Your punt account grows quickly, <laughs> but it blows very... Yeah. But it keeps you occupied enough for you to leave your main account running. So scalping is scalping wise. Scalping, basically scalping is going in and out of the market quickly. It's very wise on a punt account. <laughs> so if you see something that you like, maybe you see an, uh, um, an evening star or morning star somewhere, jump in on it, get in and out quickly. It's okay. No problem there. What happens with, with, with uh, your punt account is important because it gives you screen time. So because you're constantly trading, you're constantly learning because you're constantly watching your computer. Does that make sense? So you begin to learn and see different ways. You might actually become a master at one currency pair because you watch it all the time. You're always punting. It. So if you want to learn or you want to master a particular currency pair, right, use a punt account to do that. Go in, see how it behaves at 9 o'clock, see how it behaves at midday, see how it behaves when the market closes, see how it behaves after a news announcement. Before long, you become a master at that currency pay. But you can't become a master at that currency pay on that main account. Yes? Great stuff. So I've answered that. Are you happy with that question? All right. Uh, importance of leverage in trading. That's the last one. Importance of leverage, importance of leverage. You, you, it's extremely important. Leverage determines risk. So you've got to know and understand leverage very well. Who asked that question? Yeah. You've got to know and understand leverage very well um, so that you can place correct volume or position on your account. Um, you can't, you manage it by, change, by managing your position size, which I think you, you, you'd have already done and it's available on the course as well. So it's very, very, very important. Very important. Yeah? Great. So can I have one more question and then we conclude our Q&A session? Uh, this is more like a personal question. Personal question. Go for it. Okay, Chief, you're a very successful trader doing wonders in the markets. Uh, I wanted to ask, when you started, did you get some personal training or you trained yourself? And why, how were your first steps in the trading world? Okay. So when I started, I was 19. That puts it at 15 years ago. I was self-taught the whole way because no one, except my father would give me money actually, but no one really thought it was going anywhere, you know what I mean? Like, eh. Especially my peers. My father allowed me to sell my car, so I sold my car at a Pajero, I sold it, I managed to use that money to get into trading. And I was trading stocks quite extensively, shares. It, 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 that's why I'm saying your why must be strong. Because you can imagine being 19, 20 years old, right? 21, all the way through varsity, you'd walk into my room in varsity and I'd have charts all over the wall. Do you know? Just felt the need to print and put stuff on the wall. I don't know why. I just thought it made me look clever. <laughs> it made me feel like I was serious. <laughs> you know? But the why was strong, the why was strong. I mean, 
A lot of people who have known me since they know that this is my first and true passion. So because of that, it wasn't, it was always about the money. Because I always thought I'd get rich quick. So I wanted to prove that you can do it with trading. You know what I mean? I wanted to prove that I can place a trade and turn 10,000 into a million and be 23 and retire. <laughs> Made money, lost, 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 lost money. No mentorship whatsoever. No training. I used to do this stand back, uh, this standard bank um, in South Africa. These, the, this what's known as an OST program, online share trading program. And I, I'd go to these evening, these free seminars. This is why I like doing this stuff, right? Because I got that. I got that assistance from it. You'd go in the evenings at 5:30. There'll be free teas, and there'll be some guy talking there about about. So I'd started doing options, warrants, futures. I learned all the stuff. I'd be jotting down notes. You know what I mean? I'd be sitting in these sessions and just thinking, wow. You know, and you'd be taught by the head of Standard Bank trading. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he's there selflessly giving you assistance. Selflessly giving you assistance. No other reason other than the fact that they're trying to get their own clients to trade more. Do you know what I mean? And when you sit there and you think, wow. First of all, that, that for me was just like, oh, this guy does not need to be here. This is very rich. I mean, his watch can probably buy all of us. <laughs> like, literally, <laughs> as a person. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and so I, I, I thought, so I, was, I started getting these, like, you know, visions of training and, you know, just being able to impart and make an impact and make a difference, etc. So that's why I do it even up to today, I guess. Um, yeah. But the journey has been long. Had successes and failures. I also did went into business, so there was a, a pause in my trading journey because <coughs> my logic was let me let me find a business that allows me to generate money so I can fund my account continu continuously. So I actually quit. I was become I was yeah I was training to become a chartered accountant in Cape Town. I quit that job. Quit being a CA so I can come and be an entrepreneur quickly so I can get money to fund my account faster. Because this CA journey was taking too long. I was like, three years? Ah. Uh, on an article salary, how will I keep funding my trading? So, weird. You know what to say. The question that you should ask, would I do it all over again? That's, that's, a, that's what you want to know, right? Would I do all of that all over again? Never. Knowing what I know now. Knowing what I know now. I would get a mentor, fuck, I'll pay the mentor, whatever. I'll do serious research on the mentor. First of all, make sure they're really good, right? And then I'll pay them and I'll say, right, I see you every day. Saves time, assumptions, and money. Assumptions are the biggest problem in this journey. That's going to be okay. I should be there in six months. If I give you three more months, if I put in two more hundred dollars, <laughs> where's the mentor will tell you? Down, my brother, you haven't started. I. That's what I would do. What do you guys think about that answer? Helpful, yeah? Great. So we can take a break and then proceed to talk about. Ah, there we go. We've done QA and psychology. <laughs>